Well, good morning and welcome to our Father's House. I'm Pastor Jay and this is Katie. Hello. We're uh, happy to have you here with us today and welcome to our home. If this is your first time with us, we're really glad to have you here uh, with us today. We just wanted to go over a quick overview of what's going to mm -hmm. be taking place today and uh, then we'll get started into it. So, so first off, uh, we'll be having worship coming up after this and uh, I'll be delivering a word this morning. We'll have communion and then at the end, uh, we'll, we'll be back here to release you again. So um, if you don't have things ready for communion uh, today, just encourage you to just be flexible, figure something out. Uh, uh, we usually do crackers and juice, but, uh, but whatever's going to work for you and your family, just go for it. So sometime during the service, just take some time to do that. And just a quick reminder, again, like last week, if you happen to receive any words from the Lord yeah. during service, whether it's during the word or during worship, please go ahead and text or email us at 301-284-8637. We will be gathering up any words that might come in. And tomorrow at noon, once again, we'll be yeah. doing a Facebook Live where we'll present any words and spend some time in prayer. So for all the of you that were able to join us last Monday, we thank you. Um, it was nice to spend some virtual time with you, and we look forward to that tomorrow. Yeah, so please join us uh, tomorrow at 12 noon mm -hmm. Monday. Monday. So we hope to see you then. Uh, but now we're going to hand it over to the Romanos. They're going to lead us into worship. See you in a bit. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pete and Kerry Romano's Cell Phone Studio. Before we enter into worship, I want to give you an encouraging thought. When I was a younger Christian, and over the years, and even today, I hear the phrase, to fear God is to worship Him. Sounds good. So here's my thought. When Jesus is tempted by the devil in the wilderness and they're going back and forth and Christ is using the word, he quotes Moses out of Deuteronomy. What Jesus says is worship the Lord your God and serve him only. What Moses said was fear the Lord your God and serve him only. For here, for now, I'll say this. Jesus, he just changed everything. We come before God, as he says, boldly. It's really not because we're so bold. It's because we know he said good. And we know as a Christian, the atonement of Christ on the cross has made it possible for us to freely enter into his presence, to praise him, and to worship him. Thanks for being here. The two, a one, two, ready, and... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
was singing Alleluia. Alleluia was singing Alleluia. Alleluia was singing Alleluia. Alleluia was singing Alleluia. 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 Who am I that love? 
mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. Is this land? Ah. Uh. 
Well, welcome back from worship. We're thankful for that time. Pete and Carrie, thank you so much for leading us into worship and thanks for pressing into leading worship in a whole new way in this time. It's, it's good that we get to see your faces and really, really looking forward to getting to see you in person uh, in the future. I love you guys, thank you so much. Uh, if you're just starting back with us, uh, if you just tuned in, I'm Pastor Jay. Welcome to our Father's house and welcome to our home. Uh, this is two months now leading these virtual services here from our home, and we're just thankful for the opportunity to get to do that. So welcome here with us. I uh, just want to give you a little bit of an update on where we're going to be going in this service. Uh, I'll be uh, sharing here in a moment, and then on the other end of it, we will be doing communion. Has kind of has been our way of doing it here uh, for these uh, past several weeks. So if you don't yet have communion elements ready, I would encourage you that sometime during this message to uh, get some crackers or some bread or something together um, and, and something to drink, whether it's juice or something else. Uh, as we've been going, it's uh, flexibility mode in all of this. So just encourage you to be ready at the end for communion. I'm actually not going to be leading communion today. Uh, Zadie Shalou is going to be leading today. We're excited to have him uh, sharing today uh, for the communion message. I can't wait to hear what it is that he has to say. So, uh, so Zaid, thanks for doing that. Uh, but before we get started, I do want to, uh, I do want to pray over this message um, and just invite the, the Holy Spirit to come and, and lead and guide us through this time. So Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what you're doing right now on the earth. We thank you for your goodness in the midst of a trying time. We thank you that you've been present with us uh, wherever that we are and uh, that you are encouraging us, you're comforting us, and you're strengthening us in this time. So Holy Spirit, I invite your presence into this place, into this room I'm in right now, into all the rooms that everybody else is in right now. We thank you that we can be united by your spirit. We're thankful that... Uh, that we get to worship you in spirit and in truth, regardless of where we are on the planet right now. So we just thank you, Lord. Lord, I ask that you would, you would govern this time for us. You would shepherd this time, that you would uh, you'd speak to our hearts in ways that only you can. And Lord, I ask that you would guide my words, guide my speech. And Lord, we just ask right now uh, for your grace over this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today's gonna be a little different in a season that's been kind of different. <clears throat> this is not the first time I've recorded this message. 
I recorded it once and uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like how uh, it was all being pulled together. And the reason I did not like it is because <clears throat> I'd been in a, in a train of, of thought as I was preparing this message and, uh, and something else happened in the earth that, uh, that many of you know about. Um, we had the, uh, the killing of, um, of Ahmad Arbery that surfaced in these uh, in this past time and and it really began to to hit me over these past few days and it shifted um, what I had been studying and I think it there's some linkages through it but as I tried to make the connection for some of this it just didn't quite come together and um, and I didn't like the way that the the message came off so I'm going to abandon a lot of the other stuff that I was speaking about for, for the moment. I'm going to, I guess I'll, I'll postpone that for another message. But today I want to share really what has been on my heart over the past couple of days because <clears throat> I think it's important for us in this time to be addressing these things. Um, the Lord is excellent at uncovering things uh, at moments when they need to be uncovered. And I believe that's what's taking place here. You've heard me say before over these past several weeks that there's opportunity in, in, for us in this time to come before the Lord in a place of repentance and to shift from where we've been going to where we need to be going. That there's things that need to fall off of us in this season as we go into the next. Um, much of what I was gonna be sharing about today uh, dips into that as it relates to Pentecost, and I think it's still relevant, but the tie across to what this topic is today um, isn't quite as clear. So I'm I'm not I'm I may pull some scriptural references into what I say here, but really I want to I want you to hear what's on my heart right now, because it is going to talk to us about where we are right now, where we've been, <clears throat> but most importantly where we need to go. Um, if you haven't seen that video. I would encourage you to watch it. And the video I'm speaking about uh, specifically is uh, the video of, uh, of Ahmad uh, being attacked by, uh, by those who, who killed him. Uh, I would encourage you to watch it, not with children, of course, but as adults in America, we need to see that video. Um, some people have grown up with that as, as part of their reality. And uh, it is the manifestation of some of their worst fears. For many of us, that has not been something that has been part of our, um, our history and our experience. Uh, like myself, I, I, I did not grow up um, in a place where things like that happened with, with regularity. Uh, I'd certainly never saw it. Um, and seeing the video um, really just really hit me hard because it made me think about people that I love who are in those, um, who could easily be in that same circumstance. <clears throat> Ahmad was jogging and he was attacked and killed. It was murder. I mean, if you look at that, I, I don't know how you can look at it any other way. And I know there's a strong terms, but I think it's important for us to call things what they are. And <clears throat> it's challenging to watch, but we should see it because it's what happened. Now, <clears throat> there's much that's been done over the course of history here in our country to move from a very shameful past that we have of slavery being here in America. We've had slavery abolished. We've had the civil rights movement where certain things were made to be illegal. But there is still much work to be done as we battle against the effects of racism in our country. There's particular things that <clears throat> we must face here in America that are unique to our situation. But racism is a spirit. 
and it shows up across the planet. But we have things that we need to face here. And these events that have been brought to light should catch our attention. They should catch our attention as Americans. They should catch our attention as human beings. And they should especially catch our attention as Christians. Because we were made to love our Lord, the Lord our God, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. The first and greatest commandment. The second, which is like it, as Jesus said, is to love our neighbors as ourself. We as Christians are called to demonstrate God's love and to spread God's love. We are called to love one another. We are called to demonstrate God's love in the world. And we are also um, we can't I'm sorry, these are these words are from my heart today. These are unprepared statements. This can't keep happening in our country, and it can't be happening in our communities. I've been paying attention to conversations that have been ongoing uh, on Facebook these past several days. To hear the testimonies of those that we love should be heartbreaking for us. And I know for many of us who have seen those those accounts, it cuts you right to the heart. And they should. We have people that we love who have experienced things that they've not shared because of fear, because of uh, uh, fear of not being heard, fear of, uh, of not being understood, um, fear of going back into the, that traumatic memory. Whatever it is, they've not shared it with many of us. Things have to change. I love this community that we're in. You know, God has, he has a a beautiful dream for Southern Maryland. He has a beautiful dream for what this place means, not just to our country, but to the world. And I firmly believe that. And so when I hear some of these accounts and knowing that that they are common within this area, um, still to this day, it speaks to the plague that the enemy has sown in here. And I want to see it eradicated from this beautiful place, from this beautiful community that we call home, from the inheritance that the Lord has for us here. And I say that to those of us who, who live here and, uh, and call this place home. Uh, I love this place and I love the people here. We're talking about a spiritual thing that has taken place in the hearts of men that God wants to uh, bring an end to. You know, we wrestle against principalities and powers. And if the Lord has given us this land to live in, then he's given us jurisdictional authority here. And we have a responsibility to bring about peace in this place. And peace speaks order, speaks order into chaos. It wrestles people out of darkness. Peace comes and it is, uh, It is the antidote for the chaos that has been taking place. We as the people of God are supposed to be leading the charge in that. We are supposed to be the testimony in the earth of what a people of all nationalities, of all languages looks like. We have brothers and sisters that have been facing these things their entire lives, and many of us have never even had to have a taste of it. But the Lord is sensitizing us to it. He's been sensitizing many of us to it over time. But for me, something about this, it's just struck a different chord, and I can't keep going the way I have before. As we've been delving into this and deciding what is it, how is it that we're supposed to respond? to this. The Lord reminded me of something that I read a while back, and I would like to read it to you here today. 
because it was convicting to me then and it's even more convicting to me now. And it's a, it's a, a cry for things to be different within the body of Christ. These are the words of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. from 16 April, 1963. It's an excerpt from his letter from the Birmingham jail. <clears throat> Out of the sensitivity for those I love and for those that I don't know, there are, uh, is a term that he uses in here uh, that I'm not going to repeat. Instead, I'm going to say African-American or African-Americans. <clears throat> And I say that out of sensitivity. I would love to quote him directly, but I know that um, I know that might not sit well for some of us, and it could trigger things that uh, that we've experienced. So I'm not I'm not going to do that here. So <clears throat> bear with me as I read this letter to you <clears throat> from Dr. Martin Luther King. <clears throat> he says, first. I must confess that over the last few years, I have been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the African-American's great stumbling block in the stride toward freedom is not the white citizen counselor or the Ku Klux Klanner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace which is the absence of tension to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice. Who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I can't agree with your methods or direction. Who paternalistically feels he can set the timetable for another man's freedom. Who lives by the myth of time and who constantly advises the African-American to wait until a more convenient season. Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. In spite of my shattered dreams of the past, I came to Birmingham with the hope that the white religious leadership of this community would see the justice of our cause and with deep moral concern serve as the channel through which our just grievances would get to the power structure. I had hoped that each of you would understand. But again, I have been disappointed. I have heard numerous religious leaders of the South call upon their worshipers to comply with a desegregation decision because it is the law. But I have longed to hear white ministers say, follow this decree because integration is morally right and the African-American is your brother. In the midst of blatant injustices inflicted upon the African-American, I have watched white churches stand on the sideline and merely mouth pious irrelevancies and sanctimonious trivialities. In the midst of a mighty struggle to rid our nation of racial and economic injustice, I have heard so many ministers say, those are social issues with which the gospel has no real concern. And I have watched so many churches commit themselves to a completely otherworldly religion, which made a strange distinction between the body and the soul the sacred, and the secular. So here we are moving toward the exit of the 20th century with a religious community largely adjusted to the status quo, standing as a taillight behind other community agencies rather than a headlight leading men to higher levels of justice. Those are the words of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. from 57 years ago last month and some of that stuff rings so true today some of what you just heard me read to you rings so true today at our father's house we have been a place that has sought to bring about healing to people to build relationships between people of different races and ethnicities and cultures, 
It's been part of our heart because it's part of God's heart. It's part of God's heart. And we can't keep going on the way that we have before. When I shared in January the vision statement that the Lord's laid on my heart for our Father's house, to see a hurting world healed and to see people launched into their destiny, this is baked into that. The desire to see people healed and peoples healed to one another. For us to see <clears throat> brothers walking alongside brothers and sisters walking alongside sisters that look completely different from one another, that come from completely different backgrounds, that are different races and nationalities, that have totally different cultures that they come out of. That should be reconciliation that we should be seeing, and we should see the hearts of people changing to where we can't hunt somebody down in the street and kill them just because of the way they look. Those things can't happen. I don't want to be somebody who's sitting on the sidelines in the future, allowing others to come and help bring forth a solution in this, in this matter. I don't know what the answer is yet, <clears throat> but I know who does. And I trust him to lead us and guide us through this. And I trust him to transform us. I trust him to bring about change. And I want to be a place where that happens. When we repent and call on the grace of the Lord to come, He shows up. He honors that. I've had too much lukewarmness in my heart over this. There's seeds of this desire in me and things that the Lord has spoken about. And there's history that my family carries and many of your other families carry that likely fall on both sides of this story. But we have a history that is before us that is written somewhere. And we have the opportunity to observe it being written together, to participate in that writing as it comes into reality. And I want our Father's house to be a place where that happens. I want us to be agents of change in our community, and in our nation, and in our world. break our hearts <sighs> we have some uncomfortable conversations ahead of us because where we start is relationship we start is sharing and listening. I need people who love me. Allow me to ask <clears throat> stupid questions that seem insensitive.
he didn't need to be informed. And I need to hear about your stories. I need to see the world through your eyes so that I can stand with you stronger, so that I can take up the cause of the oppressed. wrestle people out of the jaws of the enemy. just this work here in us. <clears throat> Lord, let it spread. <clears throat> Raise up your church, Lord, in this time and teach us to lead here. <sighs> Lord, we call on your power <clears throat> and your grace in this season to come. <laughs> There would be a revival on this land, but our hearts would be prepared, Lord, and that there would be an aspect of that revival that shatters, shatters some of the work that the enemy has done in our land. Let's stand on the shoulders of those who've gone before us, Lord. Reach up, reach up. You launch the next generations into a brighter future. Lord, hear the cry of your people. Come Lord, we repent. We repent of the injustice, we repent of being lukewarm. We repent, Lord, of standing on the sidelines and saying, someone else will do it. <clears throat> Let it happen in us, Jesus. Grace and peace be with you. I trust the Holy Spirit to convict us, to remind us of all the things that the Lord has taught us, to lead us into all truth, and to bring the transforming power of the gospel to our land, to our time, and to the earth. Zaid, will you please lead us in communion? Thank you. <clears throat>
She carried me in her womb and she continues to carry me. When I give up, she lifts me up with patience. And when I have delusions of grandeur, she brings me back to earth ever so gently. And it goes on. But there is a special bond between mothers and their children. And mothers naturally have a way of putting on display certain very important attributes of the Lord to their children. So mothers, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And happy Mother's Day. This morning I'll be reading out of Romans uh, 6 verses 4 through 11. Now I encourage you to revisit that entire chapter because there's so much in there. But I'll be focusing on verses 4 through 11. So starting at verses 4. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be rendered powerless, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. And the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Now, this is such awesome news. And and as we come to the table of the Lord and remember the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, I invite you to also celebrate our death and our resurrection in Him. Now, on January 5th, 2020, a couple of months ago, I personally repented in my life uh, from pillars that I'd hung on to, at times more than I hung on to the Lord Himself. And his purposes in my life and when i say i repented i made a commitment to reposition myself and regrounded myself in the lord and on that cold morning with my family by my side i celebrated the end of a season and the beginning of another uh, that would be marked by a deeper understanding of what it means to be dead to myself and to be resurrected in christ to have him be the absolute ruler in my life. Now, we are resurrected in one body, and that body has one head. Uh, we're shielded in Christ from all the schemes of the enemy to divide us, and we are led by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit of God, to continue to grow us into alignment with his purposes here on earth. And those purposes are to put him on display through all of his children. Now, we're adopted into a family that operates differently than what's out there. And we're called to provide a standard for all to see about how to truly love one another as he loves us. Now, division in all of the ways that it manifests itself has no place, no place in the family of God. And we as the people of God are called to stand up against it. So this morning, I invite you to partner with me in inviting the Lord for more of that, for more, 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 for an increase of us tapping into the grace that he has provided for his purposes as we stand in the truth that we are also resurrected in him. So as we stand in those truths, gracious Heavenly Father, I pray that you make your words alive in us, Lord. And to that end, Lord, we welcome the activity of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to conform us, to align us to your purposes in the earth, in our appointed time, which is right now, Lord. My family, take, eat, and drink in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and God bless you.
Thank you, Zaid, for leading us in, in communion this morning. We really appreciate that. I was glad to, uh, to ask you and to, to see what you brought today. So thank you very, very much. Um, well, folks, I've uh, now had enough time to recompose myself, um, but I uh, just wanted to thank you for, for being with us and, and hopefully for staying through to hear all of that and to join in on communion with us uh, here at the end. So um, God's doing amazing things right now, and, and he's working in our hearts, and, and I trust that he's working in yours as well. Um, one thing that we just want to tell everybody is stay focused on Him mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. uh, don't let the distractions of all the things that are going on in social media and all that stuff to take you away from what God is doing in your heart right now to prepare you for this next season and to prepare us mm -hmm. as a church for what's going to be taking place in the future. So with that, we're, we want to pray for you before we release for this week. So. Uh, yeah, and just a, one more quick reminder, yeah. if you had a prophetic word, please email or text us at 301-284-8637 and join us tomorrow for a, a Facebook Live at noon. Yeah. And by the way, too, happy Mother's Day to all the moms mm -hmm. out there. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, forgot to record that earlier on, so um, we're just thankful for, for all those who are our mothers and who um, whether naturally or, mm -hmm. or by choice have, uh, have become mothers to others mm -hmm. as well. So uh, just blessings upon you today. So let's pray. You want to start? Sure. Right. Father, we thank you for this time that we've had together this morning, Lord. We thank you for how you are just engaging us on new levels, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are calling us to continue to turn our eyes and our hearts to you. Lord, we humbly come before you and we submit ourselves to be examined and loved by you. I thank you, Lord. I pray that as we enter into another week, Lord, you will help us to turn our gaze from there's so many things, and all the noise around us, Lord. And focus on you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Help us to remember what you are doing. And help us to go back to uh, weeks in the past, Father God, where we might have not felt so weary and we had more energy to focus on you, Lord. Help us to remember, Father, what you are calling us to do in this season. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And Lord, we just thank you for what you have been working on us in our hearts today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for all that you've taught us today, all that you're challenging us on. And Lord, we ask that you would help us to be responsive in whatever way we're able to right now. We thank you, Lord, for your great strength and for your great power to help us to overcome, Lord. And Lord, we know that you're leading us and you're guiding us in this time. Help us to be responsive to you. Lord, I pray your blessings of peace over our people, over your people, Lord over all who are with us here in Southern Maryland and all who are uh, far flung around the, the earth right now, Lord. I ask right now for your grace and peace to be with us this week as we face whatever challenges lie ahead of us, knowing that you are with us to see us through it. And bless, bless this day, bless this week in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us today, everybody. We'll see you virtually and we'll hopefully see you next week too. God bless you. Bye-bye. Goodbye.